What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 2023 Fall Summit presented by Grammy U. We are so excited to have you here today to hear from amazing artists like Lainey Wilson and Greta Van Fleet. I hope you're all excited. Um, they're going to be talking about some really important topics, diving deep into the touring industry and live music. So we hope that all of you will learn a lot today about how to break into it as an industry professional, an artist yourself, a sound engineer, whatever it is you want to do. Hopefully today will help guide you on that. I do want to thank the songwriter and composers wing and Music Cares for supporting us today and being partners. And I also want to thank Belmont for hosting us in their beautiful facility. So yeah, give it up for Belmont. <laughs> so um, something really cool about Grammy U is that all of our events are presented by our 14 Grammy U student representatives across the country. And so I thought, what more fitting as our MCs today than two of our national reps who have worked so hard with the rest of the reps to make this happen for you, their peers, their fellow members. So please give it up for the amazing Roy Gantz and Carly Anderson. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the Fall Summit. How are you guys doing? I'm Roy Gant, National Membership Rep. And I'm Carly Anderson. I'm the National Projects Rep. And today we're going to be talking all about the live music industry and touring. We're also going to talk about resilience on the road and how to transform your songs from the studio to the stage. So another huge, huge thank you to Music Hairs and the Songwriters and Composers Wing for your support. And we're going to get started with the show. Let's get a round of applause. All right. Now we're going to get started with our first panel. We want to introduce Teresa Walters, the Vice President of Health and Human Services at Music Cares. For the past two decades, Teresa has worked around the globe to increase access to health, financial, and emergency services in vulnerable communities. Her vision, her leadership, and expertise in both the health and philanthropic fields at Music Cares have provided access to safety net services for 20,000 music professionals each year. Here she is, and we're going to get started with the panel. Hi, thank you, guys. Thank you. What an absolutely lovely welcome. Um, so I'm Teresa Walters. I am beyond delighted to be here today with all of you for the Fall Grammy U Summit. Let's give a little more love to Belmont again. <laughs> Such a beautiful university. So gorgeous. So thrilled to be here. Um, and we also want to say hi to everyone who's watching at home. Thank you guys for joining us. We wish you were all here with us. So during today's summit, you're going to hear from an amazing lineup of artists. Um, and industry experts, and we're really going to be talking over the course of two different panels navigating both the live music industry and the touring industry. And so are you guys all ready to get started? Yeah! Okay. Great. So Music Cares is so proud to be a partner in this panel today. We're so proud to be here. We've got some of our Music Cares team in the audience with us. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Music Cares, we help the humans behind the music because the music gives so much to the world. And so Music Cares provides a number of safety net and emergency services to music professionals as they navigate health and financial and mental health areas of their life. And so today we're going to be talking about Resilience on the Road. And Resilience on the Road is really an initiative that we created at Music Cares very specifically to help music professionals, all of you, sustain your mental, physical, and social wellness while you're on the road. And so with that, I'm so excited today to be speaking with the members of Greta Van Fleet um, about their journey. And we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into how they build resilience while they're out on the road, how they sustain their wellness and really take care of themselves and each other. So with that, everyone, let me go ahead and welcome to the stage Greta Van Fleet. <laughs>
bitch in good. intro music. Testing. I see empty seats up there. What's, what is this about? What's going on? <laughs> what is this about? Did you did you pay for your ticket? Is this sold out? <laughs> All right, that was rhetorical. <laughs> Guys, we're so, so delighted to have you. Thank you guys for taking the time to do this today. So this group obviously knows incredibly well everything that you've done, but I just want to share a little bit about your bio um, and what you guys are bringing in terms of major skills to this conversation today. So you're, of course, a Grammy award-winning rock band based right here in beautiful Nashville. You are one of the most in-demand live rock acts of the generation of, let's be frank, every generation, all of our generations. Like that. And you've sold over a million tickets. Worldwide, I know, kind of impressive when you hear it read. Is back that to true? Is that, we did? that true? collective like that? I think it's got to be true. I worked it up. It's got to be. <laughs> it's, it's true. It was on Wikipedia. <laughs> cite your cite your sources. <laughs> it was exactly. So, guys, just to get us started today, would you guys mind just introducing yourselves and telling us what you do within the band? Also looked that one up this morning. You did. <laughs> Good. I forgot myself. <laughs> I'm Jake. I'm a guitarist. I'm Daniel. I'm the drummer. And I'm Sam. I do bass and keys or whatever needs to be taken care of. Facilitated. And I'm Josh, and I play the vocals. <laughs> That's amazing, guys. So we'd love to hear a little bit about your journey as a band. And how did you guys get to where you are today? Hmm. Loaded question. Yeah, we yeah, start exactly. with that one. Start with this off. This is what you call first. opening a can of worms. <laughs> yeah, we'll okay. start in the beginning. You see, the beginning, Gnungaka, the great nothingness. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> there you go. No, it's interesting. Really? I mean, it depends on which one of us you ask that we sort of get an origin story. But you know, it's, it's, it, it sort of. I mean, it's interesting. It, it always starts with the ethos of beginning with you know arts and music, and it was like we all sort of grew up in a you know. Uh, I say Bohemia. musically, be Bohemia, yeah, really, sort of a musically and artistically fluid environment. So it was like films, and it wasn't just music either, you know, it was sort of conducive to everything. So it was like film, and it was literature and um, and music and, and sort of philosophy, and it was sort of, you know, free form. It's the same with Daniel. We, so we were sort of drawn together at some point, you know, and... Um, but that's sort of where, where it started, this like-mindedness, and it certainly helps being w within the confines of that together as a sort of a collective, because we kind of share those 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 influences, and, the, and that language becomes a sort of form of communication among among all of us, and that's really where it began, and, and, and music was just sort of what happened, I suppose. I think no matter what, Jake was going to play guitar forever. Uh, and uh, I'd be poor in the streets yeah. with probably did, all these he guys. He always yeah. did. So then he, Josh would come out and start singing out. You should really do something with this guitar, Jake. <laughs> That's what I said. You know, he had he had no self esteem with that thing. <laughs> He'd been playing yeah, with it since he was enter crawling shy. over it. I'm a shy boy. And then and then Jake yeah, started, shy boy. Jake shy started boy. poaching uh, drummers from jazz band in high school. That one, and yeah, poaching yes. them. That's poaching a good them. use of words. Actually, he was I, hunting, hunting them in the wild. Jake is a hunter. The greater cause. And uh, then I was forcefully uh, made to play bass. Mm. Uh, and then, his will. and then when Daniel joined the band, then we were off and running. And then it was like, yes, this is this is Greta Van Fleet. For the record, I was not poached. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just hunted. He went voluntarily. Yeah, no, it's interesting. But I mean, if, in terms of this sort of um, this sort of environment, it, it, it's interesting to consider that you know, a boy with a guitar and a dream. You know, turned into something like this. Oh wow! You're That's pretty incredible. So the thesis it can be your, done. Your book. It can be done. <laughs> and then started the craziest summer of our, of our lives <laughs> ever. That's amazing, and I think the message "it can be done" is, of course, really important today and what we're talking about. So, we'd love to just know a little bit. So, you guys wake up. You had a show the last night, or you've got a show tonight what's the day like we do you guys no you don't. <laughs> shit so what what's a typical day like for you guys i think it's all uh at this point pretty well tailored to each individual person at the beginning it, we were all going through the same exact schedule but now we kind of figured out oh i want to be at the venue at you know noon uh, daniel you're the first one i am the first one yeah. he's always the first daniel oh, daniel always. was the first one today i will yeah, admit see <laughs> see prime example yeah, but I don't know. I like to get into the venue like maybe two hours or so before going on stage. 
because I feel like there is an energy in a place like mm. that. I, don't, I feel like it can be a little overwhelming if I'm there too long. I start to get inside my head. And so if I can just distract myself, you know, in, in a way that, that's uh, peaceful and conducive to... It's to escapism. Getting the <laughs> I actually go in and What's get the wrong whole venue set up for him. <laughs> I actually uh, really enjoy going out, like stealing a runner, like the the, the van drivers, and not driving, ab abducting of course. them. Uh, no, but then we go Poach, out. Poaching. We go out abducting, to a. We go out to a park. <laughs> <laughs> we go out to a park but because I like to immerse myself in nature. Because on the road, you never really get that. It's city to city to city, a uh, lot of concrete. So I like to be out where the trees are really tall, and I feel like I'm part of you know, the global system for a little bit. Yeah, you can actually go we a, a week or some without even seeing the sunshine sometimes. Because, you know, you, you're playing the show and, and then you get to the bus and then you go to the next uh, to the, the next hotel and then you get up and you, you get into the, the venue and it's just sort of like you, you haven't even seen the, the sunshine. You have to go outside to make sure it's still there sometimes, you know? <laughs> It hasn't, you know, uh, you know, come down with a falling sky or anything. Else. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. You see a lot. Good reference. <laughs> he just quoted we'll be himself. Saying farewell for now. <laughs> for now, at the end of this, you know, on the way out. That was pretentious. I'm but sorry, anyway, we're doing really good. Usually, <laughs> usually, well, duh. Usually, we talk over each other a lot. <laughs> no, we're, we're just getting started. What do you mean? Guys. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, what do you mean? Was, uh, <laughs> really, that's the thing. Bullshit. Joke. I can't even believe you said that. Who decorated? This is really fun. It's a, it's <laughs> fabulous, isn't it? But anyway, then we get ready for the show. Oh yeah, then the show comes. Right. Josh usually shows up. Shows. And uh, he is. Uh, he thinks uh, he's the show. Don't give. Don't don't give him that. Great, you show. back in the back now. You. That's why but people yeah. buy. That's why people buy tickets. We all have our own process of warming up. Josh likes to scream in the shower for two hours. He doesn't, he doesn't enjoy it. No. But it's required. Painful process. It's required. Yes. But I think there's really something about, you know, getting uh, on the stage, not too prepared, where you know exactly what. Well, you're he doing. would know all about. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <I'm> saying, <laughs> well, no. Yeah, it's almost missed the, show the stage. Or, you have to, for well, me, you kind of have to keep it boning it in the whole time. You know, exciting and like it, it, almost like you're doing it for the first time and keeping that alive, even though we've played the show a few times, you know. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that can get into all kinds of territories. It's another thing, too, with sort of live performance, and it sort of, I think, transcends music. You know, directing and, and, and filmmaking and, and all forms of art is this sense of sort of, um, you know, nuance in the, the beginnings of it, the excitement of doing something. And if you do it every single night, you, there's certain ways, I think, of, of keeping something alive and fresh and inspired. And I think with the way that we do it is, is we, we have... The way the set is actually set up does that. It's like, you know, all of these tracks that we play every night are completely different and, and they're so highly nuanced that they're sort of jam sections, they're, they're versions of themselves, which I think, I mean, it's just exciting for us every night as it would be for an audience. Even if someone's gone to every show on the tour, you're, just gonna, you're seeing something different every night and it sort of well, it keeps it inspired. Yeah, because it may be the same song that you're playing, but it, it feels different every night. And in, in some sense, it is different every night because it, you can never be in that moment, that very moment at that that, that same time again. It, it, it's only going to happen one time. And, you you know, those faces and those reactions and that celebratory spirit, that has basically only happens just like in the every insular moment. And you have to remember how special that is. And you, you can't fall out of love with it. Otherwise, there's no point. It's like you have to stay inspired. And, and, and for me, I just keep cranking out jumpsuits. I'll just another outfit, <laughs> another outfit, another outfit, and that really helps. Well, comic quite relief. A, yeah. Quite a good thing. <laughs> I'm, that wasn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm funny it? But it's Take for the thread, I... darling. You know. <laughs> I did it again, see? I, I'm telling you. Butter himself? Just wait till the end. I mean, farewell for now. <laughs> Actually, an album campaign. It's rigged. He wrote this. This is scripted, right? It is. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. There, there. Yeah. I love it, though, because I think it speaks to the way you guys build relationships every night in different ways with the audience, with the fans, with your community. And so I'd love to know, as part of that, when you're touring, you're all over the world. You've got this incredibly different day-to-day -day lifestyle. How do you actually sustain relationships at home with the people who matter in your lives to keep that social connectedness. 
Well, they know what they signed up for. <laughs> it, well, that's no, actually no. a good point. Yeah. I think for starters, they're all extremely supportive, and that's a huge factor in all of it. So they, they support what we do, and we obviously reciprocate that. Uh, as far as family goes, it's they, they travel out to as many shows as they can, and we love to have them and host them as many shows as we can. Um, and it's just kind of about r remaining in touch and keeping that communication going as you're traveling and sharing your experiences and not keeping everything to yourself. Which, yeah, I mean, it's certainly not easy. It's one of, the, one of those other complexities of something, especially when you get into, I mean, we haven't gotten into this territory of our lives, but at children and, you know, things like of that sort, it's like you traveling a lot and there's like, you know, these the sensitive that. things. It's, it's a, com <laughs> it's a complex, it's a complex sort of, sort of landscape to try to, to navigate. But, but I think with that is. Uh, it, it certainly helps, I think, especially being that we're all family, you know, that we're all brothers and that we sort of, that there's this tight-knit nature to what we do. So family, I think, is at the sort of peak of it. But I think keeping close together and keeping that world finite because it, it, it's it's like us and then the family that surrounds us. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty, pretty condensed. And It's yeah. a very good point. We keep a, kind of a tight circle around mm -hmm our world, which is a really horrible and insular. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great because it's it's shit, isn't it? everybody that we really regularly see uh, really is considered family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's about surrounding yourself by the r with the right people. Yeah. And then the first thing I do when I get home is I throw dishes <laughs> in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Oppa! And that's, that's how I basically I live home. <laughs> You shop at Ikea a lot and buy a lot of dishes yeah. over and over. Yeah. It's exposed <laughs> quantity. Those <laughs> are a bit expensive yeah, just throw around. That's ridiculous. Uh, well, it adds up, but it's worth it for you know, <laughs> the sake of you know, sanity. Well, sanity. For the sake of sanity, I'll, I'll uh, crash a couple of dishes. <laughs> so, guys, I'd love to know, kind of building on that theme, you guys have really discussed before about how seeing the world through touring, kind of experiencing the world as you tour, has really changed the way that you create music, um, the way that it's influenced your later albums. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about how that experience of travel and touring and seeing the world has really changed you personally. It's hard for it not to have. Yeah. We grew up in a very, very small town in the middle of Michigan, and uh, we were exposed to very little growing up. Well, they call it mid-Michigan. They call it mid-Michigan. Well, that's, well, that's about as creative very as they can. Yeah. Very middle. Yeah. Very. It's very uh, middle. No, but we, uh, we were in a unique situation where we basically essentially left high school and started becoming exposed to the, the massive world and uh, immediately started seeing other countries in Europe. And, and it's, it's amazing because every time we came back from one of those trips, we felt like we had a different understanding of a different piece of the world. And it started adding up and we could go relate to family and friends. And, and as you continue to follow through with that pattern, it starts to reflect in your personal creative, mm -hmm. um, as far as music goes, lyrically, certainly. A any of those lyrics to add? <laughs> uh, not as of now. Um, um, we'll come back to that. Yes, we'll definitely come back to that. Yes, uh, I, it is interesting. It's like, I mean, it, we talk about like sort of the, the, the idea of being an artist and sort of creating and use, using your mind in a way that I think a lot of people don't necessarily get to do because because we're thinking outside the box and, and, and that's good to apply to everything. But I think consciousness becomes a bit more, I think, dynamic, it becomes stretched when you, you, you know, you, 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 you consider ideas and philosophies and things that you hadn't. And so the cultures, traditions, people, places, ideas, things, they all sort of add up to a, to a, to a total sort of, you know, sub part of consciousness and I think we evolved once you experience that yeah ethos. exactly exactly. <laughs> exactly exactly thank you but I telepathy <laughs> it, so many words yeah it, but it's but I think that helps and I think that you know again we talk about this and the, all these artists sitting in the room and and on uh, the idea of that is to to, to, to stretch the uh, imagination. And I think that for us, creating records and making music, seeing these cultures in the world in that way has just broadened our pers perspective. I think. 
Yeah, because you do. You read about them or see them in pictures or uh, things like that. But the actually being in those places and 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 meeting those the people is a huge deal. You know, it, 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 there's something about the tradition or the philosophy or the uh, or the um, all of these these sacred things to those places that sort of sink into your DNA because you kind of, as an artist, absorb them. Um, and so I think that it's one way or another they come out. You know, when you're reaching into that space to to try to pull something out and create in something, you know, the, it sort of, I think, translates in that way. Absolutely. So what, what's the creative process for you like when you're on the road? Do you, do you create music when you're on the road? Is it, is it too chaotic? How do you actually have some time to Will we to tarnish that? the romanticism of our process if we get into it a little <laughs> bit? Yeah, we can't talk about it. <laughs> I always remember that was really funny. There was something like I think uh, it was uh, George Harrison was was working with the Monty Python group to do the Life of Brian, and he went there to see the the shoot, and they were bickering the whole time. And Eric Idle, one of the Python guys, was like, had said, you know, I think he just saw our process, and it kind of ruined <laughs> what he what he thought it was. It, and he's like, if I saw the Beatles in the in 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 the studio bickering, I probably would would want want to you know see that either. It Romantic. Right out the window. I mean, you know, when we're, I think when we're writing, there's a little bit of, well, there's definitely, you know, warfare. And um, <laughs> you try to be. Put it lightly, it's try a to bit be of reasonable. warfare, and that's all. Just a little war, and that's. Try to be reasonable. I mean, at the end, we, we're, all, we're, we're all on the same team. We're working together to, to collaborate, to create. A, a, a concept, and and I think when you're when you're constantly moving about, there's there's this there's this busyness of the mind that you can't that you can't hush, and so you can kind of harness it. I think if you to to be able to a aim it in the right direction and, and and use that energy to create something, and that happens a lot when you're when you're touring, and we're forced to kind of be in the same spaces. So whenever, of course, we see each other in those those rare strange hours, then things happen, and then you kind yeah. of try to catch it. It's interesting because I can I can remember you know a handful of times where we've actually written tr songs on stage while we're performing a show. You know, it's like with his new, like again, the, 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 those sections that we sort of improvise. There's, there's been things from those that have turned into comp entire songs on their own, and 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 so I think same thing on the bus. Like we'd work something out. You know, we'd be playing guitar. Like, Everybody's sober. Yeah, yeah, the entire time. All time. That certainly doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's you know it's great because I think you like live through your art. I think as a touring musician. You, your every single day is is to be the artist living through your work, and so like, it, you know, you don't intend to pick up a guitar or an instrument or whatever, and then you write a song. It just happens, you know. And In reality, touring takes up the majority of our schedule for the year, so you have to learn how to stay creative and keep that part of you active while you're on the road. Alcohol as much doesn't help. And alcohol does not help. Yeah. But no. Get you places, but no. In the long <laughs> run, probably not a great idea. No, but it, yeah, really. I mean, it's, it's it's important to exercise that part of you to, on, on the road as well. Yeah, yeah and that was a perfect plug because I was going to ask about actual exercise and kind of physical wellness. And how do you guys manage that? Obviously, you go find a place to have your feet on the grass. You find some trees, um, your little moments of escape. But how do you actually stay healthy? How do you take care of yourself? I won't lie. It took a few years to figure out because you're thrown into this new world and, and you really want to start with the little things and focus on learning how to sleep on a bus or learning how to sleep with these weird time schedules and your whole day from morning to night actually shifts later because bus call is two or three in the morning. So you start with then that. Then you're jumping time zones. You're jumping time zones and then that affects your eating. So I start with those little things and then it got to a point where I wanted to physically become a little bit more healthier and, and so I started this past year waking up and going on runs and running around the towns and that's a great way to kind of go see a city uh, but also just staying active um, one of my dad's favorite quotes is you stop moving you die it's true <laughs> and, that's uh, nice and you yeah. can't do shit <laughs> You can't, I mean, you, you can't, can't do my, shit my when you're <laughs> my grandfather used to say you know you can't do shit when you're dead yeah. <laughs> that's why we're here yeah. It's my favorite kind of exercise. Yeah. Yeah. If there's one that you take away yeah, from, from this, it's, it's your grandpa's advice, right? You can't do shit when you're dead. That's it. That is the takeaway. You know, it's nice today. hearing it come right. from your mouth. Right. Actually, you hear you say that. It's really nice. That's, that's, it's it's yeah. always Josh saying, oh, you can't do shit when you're dead, but it's nice to hear someone else say it. It's, yeah, it's realized. 
So that's great. So you guys, you find the places to go running, you find your little escapes, but what else did you have to learn? Because I think, I think especially if you haven't necessarily traveled a lot yet professionally, it can feel frankly really glamorous and learning how to sleep on a bus isn't super glamorous. So what are some of the other things that you had to figure out? How to, st how to, how to stay entertained, you know, is yeah. also another thing. Because the moment you become so stagnant, you, you, you start you die. feeling yourself <laughs> slipping. <laughs> and, and, and Dan and Wagner like, uh, Your say. limbs go cold. And no. Uh, yeah, no, I think that, 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 what was the question you asked? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the you answer. Delineate. Remember the exactly. It was, it, well, now I've forgotten it, too. Um, so it Shit. was essentially like, how do you guys... How do you, when you guys started touring, what were the things that really surprised you that you had to kind of learn how to do in a touring way? Like, how do you eat again? How do you interact? How well, to sleep it, two feet away from this guy. Yeah. Right, right again. It's, uh, he good snores. Scarring. He Luckily, talks in his sleep. Luckily, going back to the bohemian, you know, upbringing, uh, life on the road isn't too dissimilar from that, mm -hmm. you know, Everybody's jamming on the on the drums and and keyboards and stuff and and singing songs and I remember I'd be like sleeping underneath a table like on the wood and so it was just it was just outrageous and you know I was used to being kept up late or you know getting up early or doing pretty much everything we do on the road anyway. Yeah, again, it was helpful to kind of have the upbringing we did, but it's still chaotic. And I think it, it is as fun uh, as it can be. It can also be that equally as exhausting. So it's it's really, again, finding the, the rest and the time for rest and time for exercise, which is, is um, integral to, to being able to do this. Otherwise, uh, I don't think it would be at all possible. And it, that, I think, is one of the trickiest things about what we do all together. So guys, I just have to ask, you guys have talked a little bit about your upbringing, um, more of a bohemian lifestyle. For folks who are not familiar with Frankenmuth, Michigan, will you guys tell us a little bit? There is a singular holiday that dominates the town. Could yes. you guys talk a little no bit shit. about that? Why are people Silver bell. Is there something funny? Because yeah. it's a very silly place. Silver bell. <laughs> what's so funny about uh, dressing up like Al in the city? Oh, what's so funny about Lear yeah. Hose? And, and well, they're wearing Lear Hose in the whole thing. Biggest thing. Christmas store in the world. Yeah, if you didn't get it, it's Christmas. <laughs> it's a very bohe It's Yeah, it's, it's weird. It is like almost what you'd think of is like the traditional term of the bohemian kind of thing but it is it is a weird place because it's it's little bavaria they call it which is sort of mm -hmm. like you know, they've got so it's a german town with this interesting heritage and it looks german i mean everything about it is kind of bavarian and and it, it and it's known for having the biggest christmas store in the world they call it it's a very bizarre hold place. for applause they call it that because it is <laughs> And also, growing up there, if you haven't you been, have I wouldn't save your allowance. It was more of a <laughs> more more of a tourist town. So you you get all of these people coming in for you know Snowfest or or Auto Fest, and we would get to have kind of like a new crowd every every time we played like the local official hall. Really, really, <laughs> but we got we got a new crowd like every festival, you know. So it was great to have all these people. <laughs> Yeah. They said we couldn't bring anything that wasn't, you know. How is that? It didn't have like a Fiji logo on it. And I said, well, uh, there's nothing about a flask that would be too distracting. There's no, nothing on it. It's just a flask. So I, mean, I think it would pass. I didn't bring one, but I was thinking. What was the question again? Frankenmuth. Oh, Frankenmuth. Thank you for that, Jake. Thank we often you. try to avoid this one. You do. You yeah, do. as you can see. I love it. Um, I've been to Frankenmuth. It's a wonderful town. No. Have you? I, d I have. It's got amazing fried chicken, not Nashville fried chicken, but no. you guys do have some good fried chicken. It's, it's okay. What was your impression of that? What, 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 what was your takeaway? Yeah, let's turn The this interesting thing. <laughs> How, how did it, has it changed your life experiences? Guys, I'm not going to lie. The 365 of Christmas is a little a little interesting. It's a little unnerving to be in nonstop. It's, it's let's hear it. You just yeah. Let's hear it. Yeah. You want to know exhausting. That's exhausting. <laughs> when you're in this 24-7 Christmas globe. Right. And you skip oh, hell. school like it's a cartoon. Yeah. It's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That was it. That okay. Was it. What well, he that's, said. That's why we asked, because we know nothing else. We grew up in that environment. So to us, it was 
normal. Well, and there's so many festivals there. We like realized a festival it wasn't every weekend or something. It's crazy. So that's where we started playing f uh, first. Was in in the, the streets of the outside the cafe, and then there was this hall in in town that we would play, and we'd have the doors wide open when uh, when the, we would have festivals and things like that. So it was um, interesting. In the one year, we had the name Greta Van Fleet up on the marquee, and there's actually a Gretna Van Fleet who we took the name from, who lives in Frankenmuth, and she's still around. She's her birthday was the other day. Late 80s. Her birthday was the other day. She sent, oh. she, she, she <laughs> sent pictures. It was cute. And but so we had the name up on the marquee, and and then people started calling her and asking, "What are you doing at, at the, the hall? <laughs> this is really weird." So her and her husband had to come investigate to see what was going on. And then there's like you know these like half naked barbarians on the stage. <laughs> yeah, we were hot <laughs> shit back then. Talking about us. We were hot <laughs> shit back then. Yeah, we were. It was something. Remember those days? Those were the days. Ironically, I was I was one of those curious spectators at that show as well. Yeah, because you weren't the, the drummer. This is the crazy thing. Daniel would show up, you know, at our house, you know, at some point. Pardon. But he'd see all the shows and stuff, so he could he could get up and he could play all my guitar parts, so he could play all the drum parts that we were doing. And, and bass like, parts and vocal parts. And then we, yeah. Danny is we a multi-instrumentalist. That's something that people don't, a lot of the time don't know about him. He's a fantastic player of all sorts. Because I have pointy shoes. That's why. <laughs> He's an artist. That's the secret. That's exactly He's an artist. Why. That's the secret. So we did have a conversation earlier. The pointier your shoes, pointy. the more creative you are. Ah. So yeah. I was just going to see. The pointy, your pointy feet. shoes up here. Mm -hmm. We don't know if that's oh, those evidence. Are really ah. but She's really creative. You oh. You've got some good ones. Here some pointy goes. boots. I've got a bit oh. of round going on. I think Daniel's more really creative right now. Yeah. So guys, maybe with that, I'd love to know a little bit. So Josh, you mentioned like you like to get to a venue a couple hours beforehand, but you also want to navigate being there too soon, getting too much time yeah. in your head. And so how do you how do you manage your mental health, your mental wellness when you've got this really chaotic schedule that takes you away sometimes from the norm? Sometimes I think that the people around me that I surround myself with, who are, uh, who are with us day to day, stress you out all the time. Really stress. No, they're 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 wonderful people, and I think a lot of the time that that really helps because they yeah. can kind of keep you in check. And if you're having a really tough time, that you can kind of talk to them, and they and they they can sort of you know give you like the hug that you needed that day, or just to talk about what's going on. And you know, if I feel a little trapped. I'm like losing it. I think, and you know, that sort of thing. But it goes back to the I, whole I, family thing. Or yeah, family. exactly. So if you're surrounded by people that you love and enjoy and trust, that's really huge. And uh, I love, of course, yeah. So I think I think that's a big part of it. For, for, for yeah, I think the family thing c certainly helps. I, I, I imagine that you know, even the, the, po the sort of pop stars who are kind of isolated and singular it can be a bit challenging because they've just you know they don't really have the infrastructure around them to. Keep it. Bi well, it's yeah. not as necessarily built in automatically. Right. There is like the four of us who are very t close, and and we can have those conversations. Because it could be know. overwhelming. Like literally one day, I was in the, the the jam room. We call it. I was playing something on the on the keys, and Sam, I think, got on the kit, and then all of a sudden, I like just broke down. I was just something about this song. Just it was like, wow, I must be exhausted, or maybe I'm stressed out. But there's something about this just like l just lost lost it, you know. Mm -hmm. And he came to me, and he said, "You're right." And we sat together and talked. And it was like, you know, felt much better. This is right before I always go, like to, too, because yeah. there's always said, so much Josh, emotional Josh, tension going Josh, on Josh, all the time. Josh, it's okay. Stop being a... <laughs> Stop being such a... Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because I think, you know, like, with musicians or people thing who... thing anyone's ever said to me. To or, or, or travel, they're sort of on the edge of oblivion all the time. You're sort of always on the edge of reality and this dream world because th what you're doing is so complexly dissimilar from what people would do with you know a normal job like wake up shower get to work and then call home and yeah, see the kids it's not have dinner you don't do that and you, and yeah you don't you're not in the same place regularly you're, it's it's even in moments that seem domestic or normal to me it's weird you know you, like just taking a taking a little hike and, and, you know like Percy Warner it's like this is weird you know this is very strange but and it's also like i think it, the it's intensified all the human aspects are intensified because of it so it's like someone's ups and downs in their daily life are kind of like this you know and then with some with musicians, those arcs are a bit more... Now it doesn't help that, you know, you have that artist sort of inside of you that makes everything seem a little bit more extreme as well. It no. completely rewires your brain when you are on the road. You have this way of life, and that's a great example, because the highs are higher and the lows are lower. 
and it's kind of hard to remain in that middle sort of area. But we all kind of aim to keep each other there, which is the goal. Um, but mental health is a really important thing because it does change the way your brain works, and, and it gets confusing. And I remember the first couple of years of just not understanding what's going on, you know, having fun, but at the same time feeling a little different. And um, so that's, I mean, having each other is very helpful. Therapy is encouraged and very helpful as well. Yeah. Um, it gets into coping mechanisms. You can understand sort of st how artists or musicians or wh whatever, that, that they can get into like alcoholism or drug abuse and things like that because you're, you know, you're on the edge of a blue. Well, and you're not doing like a normal day-to-day -day -day thing. <laughs> Right, exactly. What? Something to tell us, darling. No. But then it's not like an a, to the a normal job, right? And so it, it, it's 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 not like you're being. I guess it's not like you're being drug tested, or you like you know you you, you have the night. Plus, you're crossing a border. Like it's literally very. It's it, and there's a party environment, you know. When you see people that come to the show, everybody's just ready to have the biggest time ever, and it's and you wanna you wanna give them that, and then you feel that too, and so it, it and it's hard to come down from that 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 natural high that happens and it's easy to just go oh we'll have another beverage oh we'll have another beverage you know that kind of thing can happen and then you're like boy i'm just exhausted you know so it's like watching that is important and you guys have mentioned a couple times now um how you had you know it took a few years to figure things out and then you've settled into this pattern you've kind of found your groove what happened was there some kind of paradigm shift after the first two or three years was it really just learning more about how to live on the road? Well, unfortunately, we we're all very stubborn. And uh, a lot of the times it takes self-learning. You hit a wall, and then you kind of look at the mirror and go, well, that didn't feel very good. So you start to adapt based on that. Um, Strangely enough, I think almost just having the, the t almost two years kind of break or a year and some. The, the pandemic. The, pan the pandemic was actually kind of helpful to me. <laughs> 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 yeah, the whole room. <gasps> <laughs> and that was actually kind of helpful because we were touring for, I think, about four straight years. Then we didn't live anywhere. We, when we had off time, we would go find a mountain somewhere or a beach somewhere. And it was, you didn't live anywhere. It was just nonstop tour. So I think the road was our home. That's it. So <laughs> Troubadours. I think that it was like getting sort of caught in the center of some vortex and and just to be able to step out for a minute made a huge difference. And you, you all of a sudden started to think cl a little more clearly and make connections that you don't usually make when you're so busy and you're constantly doing shows. That's domestication. No, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> also, if you I, make it. I think realizing oh, let's see if it sticks, huh? that the job on the road is not the two hour show that we're you know, on for, because that part's really fun. Right. It's all the traveling. It's getting on, you know, plane to plane to bus to, you know, just constantly packing up your suitcase, going up to a hotel room, coming back down. So well, yeah, I've heard who's people. quote? They don't. You don't get paid to yeah. play shows. You get paid to try. You get you, the travels what they're paying you for because it is like a lot. You know, you get um, all of these different. <laughs> the hardest part. Yeah. Where are you out? That was the best thing Chris Stapleton ever told us. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> God bless you. We'll remember you. So hey, we we'll love it. <laughs> Guys. God bless his soul. You always He's really tall. To That's Chris Stapleton's still alive. He's really tall. <laughs> 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 So guys, we'd love to know, we've got this incredible, incredible audience here of individuals who are all going to go on to really successful, interesting, challenging things no doubt. in music. Bravo. I look forward to seeing your faces in the stars. <laughs> we won't forget them. <laughs> all That's of them. why he's looking up. And right so, here, Jake. Right oh, here. Right. Sorry. And so we'd love to know if you guys had some strategies that you could share with all of us today on what what's really worked for you. How do you really stay healthy, grounded, balanced when you're on tour? We don't. You don't. Okay. <laughs> but that's honest. It's that's that's we're, really, yeah. we're really curious why you had us here in the first place today. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. I guess a lot of those things. I mean, uh, trusting your intuition and your instinct is huge because sometimes you become a little bit um, self-conscious. You, you, you can make... Uh, decisions i guess based on fear or concern or and, and so trusting that decisions that you're going to make naturally that you that feel correct are correct and that um you should 
feel that you can trust the people that you surround yourself with and surrounding yourself with the right people is huge because I don't think we would we would be just probably some I don't know living like Jake said we'd be just probably living in the streets you know strumming away or whatever I don't think we'd be anywhere if we weren't we didn't have the right people in our lives to to guide us and to to trusted in us and believed in our our vision and, and, and helped us along the way so those are some things on a less heartfelt note, I think oh. just keeping yourself entertained because you don't need me to tell you that there's only a couple hours of a day where you're actually working, no matter what your job is. Uh, so keeping yourself entertained with projects, something as simple as, you know, taking up drawing or, or, or something just to keep your art, the artistic part of your brain Get functioning. Get some jumpsuits in your spare time. Yeah. Send them my way. Because like we're saying, it's not a normal job. There's a lot of waiting around and uh, you need something to kind of pour your your energy into. I'd say don't let your expectations drive, you know, everything. It, it's I've learned that if you set a really, really high expectation, you start acting out of fear and you start narrowing your pathway in, in a sort of sense. So, you know, there there are going to be days that are hard and... And that is completely okay. And you completely are okay. everything you need to be. Then that's true. It and is. boobs. You always are. No, <laughs> so go with Lots the flow. Boobs. Go with the flow. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's interesting because the, the complexity of that question lies in the, the fact that not everybody is the same, that we're all so different and, and complex. And so everybody's method is going to be different. But what these guys have said, it's like, yeah, if you follow the instinct, if you trust yourself and, and you, you guide by individuality, you'll sort of find the place where you belong and, and that's that through line. It's amazing. Guys, thank you so much. Um, before we wrap up, we have time for a couple of questions um, from the audience. And so I've actually got some questions here from a couple of Grammy U members that they wanted to pose to you. <laughs> it's a good look. You wear it better. <laughs> I'm jealous. Now I feel her her really curls are way tighter than yours, Joe. Really, I'm really insecure about <laughs> That's myself true. right now. <laughs> So, guys, just to start, um, in the beginning of your touring career, how did you know you were ready to start touring, and what did you do to prepare? That's such an interesting question. Great First, question. lost my shit. That's oh. what I did. And then, you know, no, really, actually, basically, I was so so frightened. I, was, uh, I think I let anxiety get the best of me a little bit. I mm-hmm. think sometimes, if you're in tune, you, uh, meditation is a huge thing to help to be able to connect the mind-body connection and, 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 that, and be in tune with that. So You must that's lose of, yourself first to find one's mind oh jeez <laughs> what will we wow do? another another it's full cliche. of them um, you're just full of it today I read a bunch I, yeah, I read a bunch of my way over actually actually uh, meditation is one of the more effective <laughs> things because you know how your your mind can just be swirling with these things like you were saying we're really good at blowing things up and making it seem like it's worse than it is if you just sit quietly Mole right hills, up, not push mind. away Mole. any thought for five minutes you can come back to any situation and just see it as it really is. So I guess that is a really good tool. I should probably do that more often. I like to say it, but I don't really practice that philosophy. It's just do as I say, not what does I do. Smart. What? Smart. It's what? Freudian. What? Freudian what? slip. Right? <laughs> mm. I think even the highs and lows, it's like it, when you think back at all those times that you felt like you were really rock bottom and you can kind of go, you know, that was just part of th- that moment of that journey and maybe I learned something something from that. Maybe there's something underneath the surface that you needed to see that was part, then it becomes part of you that you, you've you learned from. So it's it's going to be like ups and downs and, and there's going to be days that are, are feel impossible. But it's it's it feels like it if you are aware, knowing the one day that it'll be retrospective and it's okay, and that it's not it's not this huge thing that you, you're making it out to be and meditating on, just sort of clearing your mind a little bit, coming back to um, the space that heads the, the the literal physical and and cerebral space that you're in, and and that everything seems to be a little bit more intact, and it's it's all part of an adventure at the end of the day. It's really this fuck fear and live your legend through the intelligence of love. Huzzah! Really important thing. Huzzah! 
All right, that was that was okay. Did he get two F bombs? I think he did. We all agree. Oh, Everybody gets oh, one. I told him right. he could have mine. Right. Right. Yep. Danny, right. now you're gonna have to pay up. Pay up, Danny's Jake. He's gonna stay PG thirteen. Then yeah, right. we're gonna have to watch right. it, guys. Also, if you read Lord of the Rings, it'll it'll solve all your problems. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Also, yeah. and you'll have something to do for maybe endless hours. Yeah, for a couple of years. <laughs> you read that. And talk about your head completely. You know, clearing your head. I mean, that that would probably do that too. Guys, can we ask the Grammy U um, student who posed that question to stand up and introduce themselves if they're here? Let yourself be known. Yes, please. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Hi, hey. Hi, Emily. Emily. Thank you so much. We got on the same elevator. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we go way back. <laughs> the first floor. <laughs> Almost. What happened? <laughs> well, security Thanks, guys. Emily. Oh, dude. So, guys, yeah, we've got uh, one more. We've got one more question. If I can ask the other. Remember to stand up. I think we had someone else with a question. Please. Okay. So I've got it here. So um, what is the most rewarding aspect of live performance to you? Such a great question, too. It's complex. I, I mean, th there's a part of performing every night. Seeing the face of God. Yeah. That's my <laughs> favorite part. Kind of. <laughs> what? I know everybody's face. It just went. She's <laughs> 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 oh, serious. It's there. It's it's really there. That's that's that, that thing. I I think it's interesting, like sharpening your the tools, because every every single night, yeah, every single night you play, it's like you become a better musician. So it's like, there was a period I think that you, everybody hits sort of creatively as a musician playing an instrument or you know as an artist doing whatever. And you, 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 this, the progress is immediate and expansive right off the bat. And then it becomes, I don't know how, how, how where else can I go and how much further can I be? Because I, I know all the chords, I know all the stuff, but what, what comes next? And you don't know what to do. But doing that in succession, playing every single night, it grows that sort of boundary. And all of a sudden, a door opens, and then there's a whole new level of musicianship that comes from it. And I really, I like watching that that sort of evolution with all these guys and myself where you know what's going to happen what's what's new because every night you know someone will do something that'll be like wow that was, that was inspired by each other right my biggest goal is to make people look at me during the show <laughs> <laughs> when when it's sam too, looks right? over and yeah. smiles i know i did something cool and same with jake and and same with josh i know it's yeah. like how much further should if i if i could look at myself i would should i slip <laughs> yeah exactly right you, you are so in your shoes daniel like, wow i'm really creative today <laughs> You could get a mirror up there, I guess. Good, I could. But see, there's this like healthy com uh, competitive sort of edge to the performance that we it, we're all we all experience, which is kind of playful. So that's one of those things too that that can be exciting. But ultimately, there really is a, no description of uh, the the way that you feel when you're in that space, and that you you're kind of trusting that something is coming from some higher place and it in and and, str and streaming through you or flowing through you, and you're trying to channel that thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's this huge co communicative uh, um, thing that's happening with a, a space of people that can be, uh, you know, any size. It's just sort of like you you do something and then you see a reaction and then you you you, you get something back and it is like sort of a a, a, a rocking horse of energy kind of yeah. thing, which is cool. Yeah, you get a uh, like a positive feedback loop, and I like the idea that everybody leaves with inspiration, hopefully, and uh, applies that inspiration to something else in their lives. The performances are fun, but it gets really real when you get to firsthand communicate with the audience and, and the fans and to, to realize that actually you've actually touched them in a way, which is yeah and moved to them. And as, as our you know mu musical influences moved us and inspired us to do the very thing that we're doing, you get to see that in others, and that gets me every time. What I like about that is trying to... Um trying to communicate that in such a way that, that it it's that all of us are this equal force that we're all on the same level when we're in the space that that space where that thing is happening and that's the coolest part about it and i'm i'm usually i can be very nervous um in my head and and uh, i i get stage fright all the time and sometimes that's just channeled in in such a way that it feels more excite exciting like mm -hmm. butterflies which is the better feeling of you know mm -hmm. the two and not boy i'm gonna sound like by the way it this never is goes gonna away be the worst <laughs> and i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna die you know yeah. 
But I wrote a song for that too, which I sing, which helps me. But we'll just leave that for another time anyway. But it's like, yeah. But I am the shit. I am the shit. <laughs> Look at me. No, no, it's actually because we're like, a, I'm so nervous. I think that I might die. We hope the show is good enough and not a steaming pile of shit pie. <laughs> ah, bravo! That's it. Very vodka. Not bad. <laughs> no, no, good interview. It's been- <laughs> Well, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I think there's so much inspiration there, as you said, for us to end on. So many great nuggets. We really, really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Guys, huge round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you you very much. I guess thanks for listening. The music is you. I know we're a lot. We got a 5 p.m. lecture, so we got (laughs) to... So guys, we're going to take a few minutes break, um, and then we're going to come back with our next amazing panel. So thank you, everyone. They're not going to be as interesting as this. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Easy. Uh, it's easy. easy. <laughs> oh, please. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Yes, thank you. Cheers. Goodbye, all. Thank you guys so much. Everybody and for all of you tuning in live, welcome back. How awesome was Greta Van Fleet? Wasn't that insane? It was amazing. So I'm Susan Stewart. I work for the Recording Academy, and I run our songwriter and composer's wing. Um, So we're really happy to be here, and I'm really honored to bring out the next panel, which is live from the stage, from the studio to the stage. And um, especially honored to introduce a moderator for that panel. Dallas Wilson is one of the biggest names in Nashville. He's a songwriter, producer. He works in the country and pop genres. He's written with everybody from Kelly Bannon, Dylan Scott, uh, uh, Mitchell Tenpenny, and of course the amazing and incomparable Lainey Wilson. And on a personal note, one of the nicest guys on the planet. Everybody, please welcome Dallas Wilson. Thank you, Susan. How y'all doing today? Come on. This is a good crowd. My name is Dallas. Um, so I grew up here in Nashville. My mom actually went to Belmont. And uh, dad's here, too. They're here somewhere. Um, but we got, a, we got a good panel. This is called From the Studio to the Stage. Um, and I'm going to introduce our first person here. Um, Number one, they both conquered the live music industry and are constantly working through bringing their ideas to the stage. We often hear the songs and know the process, but we're about to talk a lot about how it translates. Um, Our first person is Miss Meg Miller, who's been killing it in the industry for over eight years. She's based right here in Nashville. She's worked on tons of award shows, music videos, concerts, TV shows, and is very well versed in entertainment. She's been on the road with Miss Lainey Wilson uh, as her tour manager, and uh, the growing team is it's doubled in crew size in just a short amount of years. Uh, this has since earned her a spot as one of Nashville's 30 under 30. Let's give it up for Meg. Hey, bud. Hey, Meg. What's up? Welcome. Thank you for having me. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm just, thank y'all for having yeah, us. Thanks for having us. <laughs> all right, this is the moment y'all have been waiting for. Miss Lainey Wilson, who is a winner of the two, 2023 ACM Female Vocalist Album of the Year, Visual Media Musical Event of the Year, the reigning CMA 2022 Female Vocalist and New Artist of the Year, and New Artist to Watch. Her stardom yielded sold out shows across the board, including. Highly coveted music festivals at Stagecoach, Lollapalooza, Watershed, and she's even worked with artists like Luke Combs and Hardy. She's taken a rock star presence across the globe, performing in sold-out crowds throughout the world. You also might have caught her on Yellowstone. Uh, she's one of my favorite people, one of my best friends, Miss Lainey Wilson. Hey, that made me feel good. Hey, Birdie. What's going on? <laughs> How y'all doing? Good to see y'all. Good to see you. It's a packed house. I like this. What are we going to talk about? So, first of all, um, let's just talk about how you guys met and how you 
you know, got into doing what you're doing together. So like, Meg, where, where are you from? How'd you get here? I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, so pretty far from Nashville, but um, I moved here in 2019, and I had been working at a venue in Baltimore, and I wanted to get into touring, and this is kind of the place to be. So moved here in 2019, did every job I could in town, music videos, CMA Awards, ACM Awards, everything, at the Opry, all of it, and um, I met a bunch of people through doing all of that, and one of those people was Lainey's old tour manager, Tisha, and Tisha had been doing some other artists as well, and she had been, in the summer of 2021, tour managing for Lainey, and I was helping her remote book hotels and flights and stuff, because they were going like crazy. Lainey hit the ground running in 2021. You were moving, and um, Tisha had to go back to her old gig, and so then I um, started in August of 2021, and just when she was starting the Jason Aldean tour, and I've been with you ever since. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you kind of came in right when things started getting exciting, right when we Crazy. were about to have our first number one with a song called Things a Man Ought to Know. So uh, we were in a van at that time. Yep. And uh, probably about a year later is when we finally got on a bus. But yeah, you've you've been there through the trenches. Oh, yeah. We were in it. We were, we were in, in it. We still in it, girl. We still in we it. We still in That's it. That's right. We yeah. still so, in it. So since the trenches, what's it like now day to day in y'all's relationship and, and what y'all talk and deal with? Oh, my goodness. I mean, honestly, it's it's kind of uh, different every day, which keeps this whole thing exciting and interesting. Um, yeah, I feel like there are some days where, you know, if we've got music coming out um, during the day on the road, I'll be doing interviews or press and the day is kind of full with things and then you have the show. Um, but other times it's pretty chill when I'm back there trying to take care of myself the best way I can. And sometimes that means just uh, sitting outside in a rocking chair outside of the bus yeah. and getting some sunshine. The theme of this year is rest because yeah. we've, I think at the end we'll do something like 162 shows this year. And so if you can imagine that's even more days away from home, it's probably more like 200 something. So it's just when you're out on the road trying to take it slow, ground yourself a little bit, yeah. but in our day to day, like, it depends on the show. So there's some days where I'm buried in the depths of a arena and she's hanging somewhere else or we're both out on the bus at a festival. And so it just kind of depends. But and at times, like I'll bring this one over here. He's a co-writer and dear friend of mine. Uh, we'll bring writers out because the truth is we don't have very many days here in Nashville the last couple of years. And you got to be right for that next record. So uh, for me lately, the songs that I've been getting is, is from bringing my people out on the road with me and collaborating. Well, and I'll add to that. There are some artists who are who love writing on the road and some don't at all. But Lainey's the kind of artist who freaking wakes up, sound check. We're writing, she's, we're writing a verse while she's putting her makeup on for the show. So she's a worker, <laughs> which is pretty rare. Um, going back to the, the writing process, I've gotten to write a lot of songs with you. But I want you to tell them, like, how much are you thinking about how it's going to translate to the record um, and even live, like, as you're writing? Oh, my gosh. I mean, to tell you the truth, it's it's all about a vision. Um, I feel like when we're writing, I'm, I'm making sure, of course, that I'm I'm telling my story and I'm, I'm being as authentic and, like, true to myself. But also at the, at the same time, it's trying to make sure that. I'm making people feel something. That's my job. Whether it makes you want to laugh or cry or drink a beer, that's what I'm supposed to do. And so, of course, um, that's what that's what we are honing in on. We're like, how is this going to translate live? Because that's what this is all about, being able to go to as many places as you possibly can and meet as many people as you possibly can and, and leave your mark on that on that town and uh, make those people feel something. So, yeah, it's got, it's got to have that feeling to it. There are a lot of times where Lainey will show us, oh my God, show us um, a song for the first time and we'll be like, ah, oh, this is the show opener. This is going to be it. We're going to make this moment happen. This is going to be something. So it's yep. cool to like kind of imagine those things right after you're excited sure. about the song itself, but then you show it and then we start being like, oh my gosh. And then you can drop from the ceiling. Yeah, you'll be yeah, over yeah. there on the We hadn't done that one yet. <laughs> Soon. I hadn't barely flopped on the crowd or anything just yet. <laughs> Write that's that one coming. down. Yeah. That's coming. But the truth is... Um, you do just kind of have to like envision um, yourself playing it for a lot of folks. And there's times where you have to kind of pretend to be something that you're not. So one day you can kind of feel the shoes of whatever it is that you were called to be. And that's the truth. So when people are like, quit acting like you're something that you're not, um, you got to, you've got to see it. You got to visualize and, and put yourself in that place until you get to that place. And then it's constantly changing. So that's just me getting a little deep on you for a second. Go ahead. Next. So, 
So like as you're in the studio, how how much and even after the the songs are produced with Jay, mm-hmm. how how often do the arrangements change um for the tour or or yeah. is it kind of like the record? I mean, the truth is we try to stay as close to the record as we possibly can um because what my producer does, I think he's just absolutely incredible. His name is Jay Joyce and he is a mad scientist is what I like to call him. He walks around the studio and kind of untunes people's guitars and um, he just wants it to sound imperfect. And the truth is I'm not trying to be perfect either. And I think that's why we work so well together. But um, my goodness, I will say when you're in the studio, you've got to, you've got to like, be able to picture it while you're while you're out there playing in front of all these people at times the mandolin that you're playing on the record is not going to cut through as much as an electric guitar would and we try to make sure that our show is as rocking as you possibly can get so there's times where we have to you know interchange instruments and even the way that I sing things on the record might be different when I'm singing it live maybe I'm hollering a word instead of of singing the word um, because it's just about making sure you get that that like thump in your chest that everybody's wanting. So Aslan is Laney's musical director and he'll basically take Jay's mad science equations and like translate them for the stage. So that's a huge part of his job as band leader and musical director. He'll kind of figure that out. And most recently we had um, put never say never back into the set and we just had to change it up a little bit to make it fit the flow. And it turned out great. And that was a collaboration from you and Aslan, just kind of figuring out what sound you wanted in that space. Yeah. So it's just about teamwork, um, talking to your team, talking to your MD, your music director, and um, all being on the same page, too, is a song that I did with Cole Swindell called Never Say Never. And um, it's a mouthful for one person to sing. So we're like, now how can we do this and sell it and really show, still show the feeling of the song but have one person singing it? And that's where we kind of just strip it all back, take everything away and start from scratch and put our own little spin and version on it. But it's about having people around you who understand what your vision is. And I really do think I've got a lot of people um, in my life and in my corner and on my team. Uh, My team is like my family. That's just how it is. They say don't mix business and pleasure, but around here, that's how it works. (laughs) Yep. So when y'all are, y'all are doing the set list, um, do y'all, do y'all kind of sit down and talk about it? And is it, trial and error of that one went over well we should we should do add this one take away this one or um is it always evolving it is always evolving and that's the fun part about it like you know everything everything don't have to be cookie cutter uh this tour that we just started with hardy you know we we did a few days worth of rehearsals and uh we were like we had it dialed in we knew exactly what we were doing and then we get out there and we realize okay Um, I think we might need to make some changes and figure out a different flow because the truth is sometimes you just don't know until you get out there in front of a crowd, in front of real people instead of just playing it to each other. And then we make changes. We uh, we're like this song, I think would be better here. Let's pull this song out and put something else here. And so it's steadily evolving. And it also just kind of depends on what kind of people are in the crowd. You know, you have to be able to adjust to your settings. I mean, A good example is I used to impersonate Hannah Montana. That was my job. So I had the wig. I had the portable sound system. I did this from eighth grade all the way through 12th grade. And I would play birthday parties and fairs and festivals, St. Jude. Um, But one day I'd be playing for a nursing home. And the next day I'd be playing for a three-year-old's birthday. So the way that you talk to each to each kind of people like you're, you're going to communicate in, in different kind of ways and that's the way it is still today I mean if we're playing a theater um, I'm going to be speaking to these people different than I would be talking to um, some Hardy fans you see what I'm saying yep so um, I remember when you were opening for Hardy and was it was just acoustic or maybe you had a, one player with you just me. It was me, so, Hardy, and Morgan yeah. in 2019. So now that, I mean, you have a, a big band, you have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. How do you decide which songs you're doing acoustic and which ones you're going to run around and Ooh. dance to? Um, I think for me, the ones that I feel like are the most like acoustic-driven are the ones that I pick up my guitar. Um, 
I do love running around the stage, though. I'm telling you, like, we just got off this tour with Luke Holmes. We did a stadium tour, and I felt right at home. I was just running up and down that thing. Like, eventually, I was... She'll say, I'm not going to run a lot tonight. I'm going to take, take it easy. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know you're not. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Every single day, right off the bat, yeah. really happy. The first I just song, couldn't help it. Right down the ramp. Like, Let me get yeah. all that energy out right there. Yes. Um, so it's hard for her to, like, kind of sometimes take it back and do acoustic. Yeah. Be glued to that microphone. Yeah. yeah. I just love moving. I feel it with like every fiber of my being. And there's times where I feel like I need to put that guitar down um, to really just be able to like really, really get into it. But like I have a song uh, for my daddy called Those Boots. And, you know, I, I, it's more of like a, a stripped back acoustic. And there's times where I let the band lead the stage and I just do it me and my guitar because the truth is that's where it started for me. I picked up a guitar when I was 11 and my daddy showed me a few chords on the guitar. And every now and then it feels good to just strip it back and show folks where it started for me, where that storytelling really kind of came from. So I know sometimes on these big tours, you might have limited time to sound check or shoot, the electricity might go out on the frickin' box. Um, we should talk about that, but how do you decide, like, what you're going to sound check with? Like, what song? Is it always a go-to? Or We always make sure that we do top of the show because uh, the front of house guy wants to make sure that that downbeat, like, right when we start this show, uh, that the first note that is happening, it is, like, spot on so we always go with top of show and we also kind of choose a song say we do like a second song have time to do a second song um because most of the time they're like y'all gotta hurry up and get out of here we gotta get the next person in there's times where we don't get to do a sound check at all and you just gotta cross your fingers and and hope that all goes well um but we try to find a song that is kind of like even keel across the board making sure that it's a song that um maybe i'm playing my guitar on or our utility guy he can um he can start out playing the key and he can pick his guitar up too to make sure that it's it's running good just a kind of an overall like everybody play everything they're supposed to one of those songs wouldn't you say you never know when an amp's going to make a weird sound so it's always it's always nice to at least check everything and you never know when your whole gear yeah is going to get struck yeah. by lightning well, that won't happen can, again can you tell him about happened that twice, but it won't happen again <laughs> yeah that was what we were in charlotte with good. luke holmes at the stadium and our uh, <laughs> our front of house console got fried because of this lightning yes. that came down. And it actually not only fried the console, but a piece on the monitor console, I believe, as well. And so they weren't talking to each other and we were trying to figure it out. And thankfully, Luke Combs' camp is, you know, pro. They're very pro. They're very kind. And so they hooked us up. They got her and Aslan hooked up. So they just did acoustic for, a, I think that was a 30 pretty minute cool. set. Yeah, it was awesome. To a stadium. I mean, when are you going to do that for the full set? That's right. Yeah. And then again, when we were playing Billy Bob's Texas, um, lightning hit the uh, building and it actually only affected the breaker that went to the stage. So the PA was completely down. So we've had some doozies with lightning. We picked up year. a megaphone and started singing through a megaphone just to us. give them something. And then uh, it came back on. It was only down for seven minutes, but it felt like two hours. We were like, oh, no. But, I mean, hey, lightning striking twice. Can Never again. Yeah. Thing, right? <laughs> Never again. <laughs> so, on another subject, back to, like, rehearsing. How do y'all approach rehearsing when it's, like, you know, a Luke Combs tour versus a headlining tour? Or if it's just, like, a, oh, CMA Fest where you might have four songs yeah. or, or an award show? How do those vary? So we've actually never rehearsed for like an award show or TV. <laughs> like we only, we do, we yep. try and fit in the schedule, but when you're touring this much, it's kind of hard to. So we'll try and block out like a week at a time to do some like actual in a, in a studio or in a place uh, where we can set up our lights and set up everything and make sure everything goes yep. pretty smooth. But um, you're right. We've never rehearsed for like a CMT award, CMA awards. We rehearse like when we're doing like camera blocking and stuff like that for the show. But truth is I'm, we've got just such incredible musicians on our team and I mean, they could play this stuff in their sleep by now. So I'm not worried about them. Yep. Yeah. But for the Luke Combs show, I believe our set was, what was it like? Probably, I think it was 25 minutes or 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, um, we rehearse for that one. So yeah. there's not much time to talk in 25, 30 minutes. And I'm sure y'all can tell by now that I like to talk. So, <laughs> um, 
So we got to make sure that we we put these songs like back to back to back to back to try to figure out how to get as many songs in there as we possibly can, because that's what the people came to hear, not hear me run my mouth. So but when it's a headlining show, we can kind of take our time a little bit more and uh, and tell those stories behind the songs. But for that stadium tour, it was like bang, 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 get it. And rehearsals for them are a lot of times creative driven. And so they're just trying out new stuff seeing what works, seeing what doesn't and trying out the mm-hmm. transitions with switching guitars and stuff. And so it's a lot more of just like, okay, this makes sense versus starting from scratch, which is nice. Speaking of starting from scratch, how did you find your crew and your band and, and where did it all, all start from karaoke, Mon- Hannah Montana? To, yeah, you're right. You're right. Going on? I will say I've been through a lot of different bands. Um, I was with a band back at home in Louisiana I moved to Nashville 12 years ago, I guess 12 and a half years ago now. But um, I was about five or six years in, and I met a girl named Mandolin who became a dear friend of mine. And um, she's from North Carolina, and she was the one that, like, believed in me before anybody did. And um, she wasn't even really in the music business at the time. I think she was she was working for a, a music attorney. Um, but any opportunity she got, she would just send my music to as many people as she possibly could. And um, she introduced me to this guy named Aslan Freeman, um, who is also from North Carolina. And both of them just kind of took me under their wing and uh, just wanted to, to be a part of, of this team. And I, wouldn't, <laughs> I didn't even have anything going on at the time. And so um, Aslan started producing a few songs for me. Um, that project right there is what landed me a record deal with uh, BMG Broken Bow. And we just kind of got each other. Like he understood what I was trying to do. And I think it's really important to, to find those kind of people, people who take what you do and, and uh, want to take it to that next level, but don't want to completely change who you are and, and what you're trying to say. And that was him. And so he became my music director. He was the one that um, was like, Hey, I, I, I know these two guys, um, two brothers, the Nolan brothers, one's my drummer and one's my utility player. And he said, you know, I've, I've heard nothing but great things about them. I know them. They've worked on other projects that I've been a part of. I think that we should bring them out and try them. And um, that's the way it happened. Aslan was the one that kind of like put people in place. And, um, you know, we, we are so like, tight knit and close um and we genuinely love each other so much and genuinely love what we do um we're very careful careful about like who else we bring in and then um a year or two go by and then we ended up hiring a guy named tommy who filled in for aslan when i was on radio tour he looks just like jesus he does look like jesus don't he yeah he does he he came back he don't come back so Anyway, um, it's got to be the right vibe. It's got to. I'm telling you, one bad egg can throw it all off, and they have to. They have to be fans of the music because you can tell if they're not. And they are all there to do their job the best they can. One cool thing about the band is that each guy has like a different background, and none of them are country. Yeah. So Aslan has like a punk bo- background, like yep. a pop punk background, and yep. then the Nolan brothers are both really big into jazz. Went to school in Louisiana and New Orleans really into jazz and then um tommy's like an indie kind of folk rock kind of vibe Mm -hmm. so like they all bring these unique sounds to the table and i think that works really well with her record because or all of them just because you never have done it in something that's just boring yeah it's always been unique they're they're pretty cool dudes they are and and meg for you you know it's like she was saying it's so important who you're you're hanging out with 24 7 what's the process like with everyone else on the crew For a while, we've just kind of been somehow finding friends of friends or people who we've found to be really hard workers and who have kind of a drive for this and just bringing them along for the ride. Um, And they work their asses off. And we have our front of house engineer, Rob. We kind of plucked him from Jason Aldean's crew when we were opening for Jason. So thank you for that, Jason. And uh, he joined with us at the beginning of 2022. He's been with us ever since. He's phenomenal. And then we've got some other folks that are just kind of we found along the way we have some vendors like our lighting vendor gave us an ld and was like we know that this guy's going to be perfect and i was like how do you know that and he is mitch is incredible um we've had some people from openers bands that have expressed interest in not playing anymore who we've brought along and it's just it has really been all about hard work and kindness 
we want to beat out Garth Brooks' team because they call themselves the nicest tour in country music, and I want to be the nicest tour. We come up for you, Garth. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do that, but their team's the best. But yeah. We did get to play a show with them about a month or so ago in New Orleans, and it really does go very far, the way that you treat people. Yeah, it showed kind of where we want to be because they definitely did the same thing that we did. So it's we're, that's how we kind of pick them. Are you kind? Are you hardworking? Are you having fun? Do you want to have fun? Mm-hmm. Do you enjoy the music? Are you, are you here for the right reasons? Yeah. And we've been really lucky, really fortunate. So, um, Lainey, subject change. Let's just talk about your vibe, your style. The bell bottoms, the hat. How, how does that play into the... Where's your bell bottoms at? I thought you were I forgot wear bell mine. today. I know. Yeah. But, um, like, how many outfits do you have and how often do you think about... I wouldn't be able to show? answer that correctly. <laughs> I'm going to be An honest. infinite amount. An yeah. infinite amount. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Um, well, how how much do you think about it when it comes to touring and your shows? Uh, I will tell you, like, I am the kind of person I just kind of throw something together. And I honestly think I, like, started doing that when I was in person in Hannah Montana because you just had to go. You know what I'm saying? You had to put on that outfit and go. But the whole bell bottom country thing is uh, it's a it's a term that we kind of used to describe years ago, my sound and my look and just kind of the overall uh, theme and direction of, of where we were heading. And um, the music kind of, when, when I think about bell bottom country, I think of kind of fresh but also familiar. And um, that's why we ended up naming the record bell bottom country. It's, it's country with a flair. It's about finding whatever it is about you that makes you unique and different and leaning into it as much as you possibly can. I mean, it can be where you're from, the way that you talk, the way that you dress, um, your story, whatever it is, it's about embracing that. And um, yeah, I think that's what bell bottom country is. And I really feel like I get to express myself with the way that I dress, just like I get to express myself with my music. And it's fun to do. I mean, uh, at first, years ago, when I started dressing like this, I've I mean, people would look at me like, what in the world? You dressing up for Halloween? Um, But I love it. I love it. I'm trying to be different. When I moved here in in 2011, I realized that just being a decent singer-songwriter as a female is not enough. And that's just the truth. I think that tides are starting to kind of change a little bit. But you also just got to think, what can I do to to step outside and kind of push those boundaries and do something that other people aren't doing? And for me, it was... Uh, putting on my bell bottoms and my hat every day, it kind of made me feel like a badass. It made me feel like, um, I don't know, I was just kind of finding my thing. And we're selling bell bottoms now, ain't we? We got some bell bottoms. Uh, so, we all you streamers runner. out there across the globe, <laughs> ladywilson.com or something like that. Um, so what what's the creative process for, for bringing the a- album concept to life on tour? You kind of hit on that a good bit. Um uh, country with a flair yeah but. it's about like the word i keep going back to is vision you know like what is that overall vision and does everybody behind the scenes get it and um i've got a, a lot of really creative people on my team and in my band and my crew and yeah it's all got to match it's all got to go hand in hand and and tell a story because that's what country music is, and that's why I fell in love with country music to begin with, songs from the 90s. So we talked about this a little bit, but uh, when you did Grease at the ACMs, mm-hmm. I was there. That was that was wild. That was it was moment. wild. <laughs> so, I mean, we had pyrotechnics, lighting effects, and all sorts of stuff that probably isn't every day. Yep. What, what went into planning that? A lot of it is from the award show creative team themselves. Yes. So we can't take credit for their creativity, but we can say that like we'll, you and Madeline will work with them and kind of figure out what you want to do and what, what do you want to be different from the last thing or do you want, what do you want to bring to this one? Um, we can't mention Greece and not tell the story about your in-ear pack though. Oh, yeah. So you're rocking from the stage with Jelly Roll, Jelly Roll, walking up, yes. camera following you. Camera following me. I threw the, my hat at the camera. You did the first couple lines of Greece. And then she wears an in-ear pack so she can hear in her ears. And that thing pops off her belt. It was a belt we've never worn before. So yep. like it was pops off. Pops so I'm holding off. my pack in my hand. And there was I all had, this choreography with the mic stand. Yeah, I was supposed to be doing microphone tricks and stuff. Didn't happen because I had the dang pack Nothing. in my hand. But uh, you just got to roll with it. Yeah. And no one noticed. Well, no one. so I mean, I made eye contact with Keith Urban and I was like, he knows. You're like, help me. 
he knows. Help me, Keith. But then he did text me after. He's like, that was pro. And I was like, all right, as long as you think so, we good. We good. I, I like, didn't I even you. notice. Yeah. I didn't notice she had the pack in her hand the whole time. Keith Urban did. <laughs> Keith Urban did. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a logistical question, Meg. What are what are some of the things you consider as the show is coming together? Um, I know there's a lot of elements elements to build out a show with timing, travel, meet and greets, press, merch. Um, what do you keep at top of mind to make sure everything goes smooth? I would say the first thing is getting there because back before we had the buses, it was not as easy as it is now. We would have to you know, drive, plane, drive there. So it, that was definitely number one for a while. Um, it still kind of is, but making sure we get there on time, what time do we need to be there? But then I think the most important thing is all of the, the stage components. Like if, you know, we don't get hospitality one day, we're not going to, we're not going to die. It'll be fine. But if we don't have a PA system or the RF that we need or whatever, and now we have so many folks involved, we have a merch manager who pretty much does all that on his own. He's killer he's the best shout out merch matt and then um we have a pm who will handle all the other stuff and and work with our front of house engineer and everything to make sure it's really just situational so it's kind of hard to pinpoint a couple specific things it's just like can we put on the show as is uh, with what we have and usually it's a yes i mean we'll put on a show no matter what we'll put on a show after the lightning strikes like we'll do it it just will it be up to par with what she needs and so usually it kind of comes together just because there's so many folks making sure their piece is perfect. Yeah. But back in the day when it was just me, we were kind of like, here, we're showing up with all this stuff and we're going to do it. And they would be like, okay. Um, but yeah, there's more folks now to make sure that everything's perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. Y'all are about to go to how many buses next year? Like four or five. Wow. Something like Let's that. Let's go. I've only Something been on crazy. a bus for a little over a year, which the bus has completely changed my life. Just having a space to to lay down i mean we toured in a with a truck and a trailer for 10 years and then moved up to a van for a couple years and um the week before i started y'all had a 6 a.m flight every single day for five days straight yeah you missed that one yeah i was like but (laughs) but that was it's definitely not that difficult anymore the it'll be amazing the routing also is is really great for next year we're excited i don't know if y'all saw that announcement but we're yeah, really excited to play happening venues. next year. Yeah, it's we're gonna excited. be awesome. A lot of those are bucket list, so it'll yep. be cool. So, looking back over the years, when you think of some of the most memorable moments on the road or specific shows, what what's one or two that you're like that was special or that was cool or unexpected? I mean, a few weeks ago, yeah, Red Rocks, Red Rocks, yeah. Red Rocks. I mean, I think as a touring musician, I think everybody's got Red Rocks on their bucket list. It was just as magical as everybody said it would be. Um, just the vibe and the energy in there, and everybody was so excited. I mean, there a lot of people had flown in to to be there too because it's their bucket list dream to to watch a show there. And so a lot of our fans came from all around the country to be there, and it just it was cool. It was a special it was moment, a great experience. If you have a chance to go to a Red Rock show, you definitely should. Yep. It was really incredible, and just the fact that we got to look and see all the people who played there sign their names in that little wild. tunnel they've got. It's insane. It's really cool. Um, and that was the second show, or maybe third, that we had our full, like, headlining that size stage mm-hmm. stuff. We had a lot of risers for her to run around on, a huge video wall. It just felt so much more like, wow, we're here. We've yep. done it. Um, and then the second most fun or memorable was the first arena show we've ever done at Mohican Sun in Connecticut. Yep. That was a big we're in big leagues. We're in the big That's kids right. club. And it was kind of a weird feeling. It, it is a weird yeah. feeling, but it's about like taking a step back from it and, and realizing like the moment that you're in. And I'm trying to do that as much as I possibly can. At times it's so fast paced that you just get caught up and you just got to get ready for the next thing. And that's the truth. Um, but celebrate it. Like find those moments and be like, man, if I'd have told myself two years ago that I'd be here at Mohegan Sun, um, like recognize that and then put it, put that feather in your hat and then move on to the next one. But it was almost two years ago to the day that we had opened for Jason Aldean at Mohegan Sun. And then two years later you headlined it. And it was, that was a really crazy realization. That's right. But same thing. We just go, oh my God, that's amazing. Let's celebrate. But what's next? That's right. Let's do what's next. We got to stay on our toes. Yeah. Got to stay on your toes. So, um, You've done you've done a couple big duets, one with Hardy, one with Jelly Roll. How do you decide who you're going to collaborate with? Um, because I'm sure there's a lot of songs that get thrown out to potentially do it. And 
what's your process with, uh, you know, knowing who you're going to feature on and yep. who, who you're going to tour with? Uh, well, for me, when it comes to collabs, it's just got to happen organically. And I feel like I, I want to work with people who have something to say. And I think Hardy's got something to say. I think Jelly Roll's got something to say. And and is this something that if I'm a part of their song, is this something that I'm going to want to say the rest of my life? Because the truth is, songs outlive us. You know, we're, we're dead and gone and those songs are still going to be here. So is this something I'm going to be proud of when I'm gone? Um, because that's it. And um, and I just feel like they have, they're they're different than me. I think it's really cool to be able to collaborate with folks and be like, hey, I love this person and believe in this person. Maybe you should too. And I think that's the beauty of, um, of doing that together. So, I love those boys. I, um, I'm excited to be able to do that for other people. I think there is something so powerful about, um, word of mouth. And especially when you ask somebody to be on a song with you and you show that like that you really do believe in that person. Um, I think it means a whole lot. Carries a lot of weight. So, y'all, um, we got a couple more questions. Uh, I know we we probably have a lot of talented people in here. Um, it's Nashville, probably a lot of Belmont people here. My mom, my mom went to Belmont. And she ended up singing with Loretta Lynn for eight years on the road. And thank God that's how she met my daddy. So we'll Where are they? Out. Thank you, Belmont. Um, they here somewhere. They here. They have here. Oh, we going to make them wave. Y'all better so. turn around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all, I'm not playing his parents. Or just tell them a little bit about your parents. Like, let's just take a little detour. You can tell them. Well, first of all, his daddy, Lonnie Wilson. It sounds like Laney, but it ain't. <laughs> um he has played on every 90s country hit um, that you can imagine um, as a drummer and one of the, the baddest drummers out there. And uh, you tell them about how they met real quick. Did you tell them that? Oh, well, mom was mom was on the road with Loretta as a background singer. And my yep. dad's band bandana was opening for Loretta. And I think they met backstage or something. Yeah. And, the, and dad gave her his, his business card and. <laughs> it somehow you still worked. Got it? <laughs> it took a minute, but it worked out. But yeah, so anyway, I know we got a lot of talented people here, a lot of Belmont people um that are aspiring artists, writers, um all things above in the industry. What what advice can can you give um to somebody getting started on like building their first shows, um you know, any any advice? Oh my gosh. I feel like I got all sorts. The truth is, I feel like um, we were kind of thrown into the fire here lately where we're we're in a constant state right now of having to level up. I mean, we're like, as soon as we feel like, all right, like we're here now, if it seems like things shift and you just got to like, you got to get to the next step, whatever that looks like. And it is, it's really like a feeling that you feel. Um, I would say, first of all, Find what find whatever it is that is your strength and really just hone in on it as much as you possibly can. Um, surround yourself with good people, um, but not yes people, like not ones that are just going to butter your biscuit just to and get on down the road. Like um, surround yourself with people who want it just as bad as you and will be open and honest with you, but also love you and love what you do and um I mean, y'all, this is, it's pretty cool. Think about like what we're in this room, what we're all going to be able to do. And, um, a lot of people go to work every single day and hate their job. And this is, it's a really cool industry to be a part of. I mean, we're getting to, to change the world, um, one song at a time and one show at a time. And it's really, really special. And so just don't, don't take it for granted. I mean, this is, it's pretty magical. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to your story. Um, there's a, I was telling them earlier, I'm, I'm reading this book right now, Brene Brown, Dare to Lead. And I'm not going to sit here and act like I read books all the time, but I'm reading this one. I'm about 20 pages in. Um, but she was talking about how there's such a thin line between bravery and fear. And um, they kind of like go hand in hand together. Like you're not being brave if you don't have a little bit of fear. So it's just about you know, rolling your sleeves up and doing whatever you got to do, but be as kind as you possibly can because that right there goes a lot further than whether you're good or not. 
That's the truth. Yeah, I was going to brag on you and say, Lainey is like, I don't even know how you do it, but you treat every single person that you meet with the same amount of kindness and respect from the janitor to the CEO. And you never know who that person's going to be later in life. So it's just, that's something you've lived by. That's something that I hope our crew lives by and that I know you live by too. So that's probably the biggest thing is like, you can't get people in your corner if you're not nice to everybody and lead with kindness. Amen, ladies. Well, we got two uh, questions from Grammy U members here. Um, so the first one is from Carolina, and she said, "During live performance, how much how much is open for improvisation? Are all moves uh, an original expression, or are they planned beforehand? And can you do as you wish on stage?" It's different for me every single time. Um, I look like the Tasmanian devil up there sometimes, spinning around in a circle. At times I did like one too many, and I'm like, whoa, I need to sit down for a second. Um, yeah, it's just a free-spirited thing up there for me. There's times where I'll hit the ground on my knees to hit a high note. Um, and there's times where I just, like, just can't quite do it that day. You know, I mean, it depends It depends on the day. It depends on um, on on everything. I mean, maybe I'm finding a little girl on the front row in her bell bottoms and hats and I'm singing directly to her for my song at a girl or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's about really feeling it. You know, she's feeling it when she's up on the drum kit. When she's like, yeah, up on the drum yeah, yeah. riser. You're like, would you get off the drum kit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Matt's looking at you like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Acting like I'm doing something up there. <laughs> All right, y'all, we got one more from Bethany. She says, as a woman with experience in the industry, what is some advice you give to female students and younger girls dreaming of what you're doing one day? Oh, that's, yeah, that's an important one because it can still be a boys club at times, but I just consider myself part of the boys club. I don't let them keep me out. I just say, hey, I'm here and you're going to deal with it (laughs) and we're going to do our thing and we're going to get things done. And I don't think I've had that many really insane experiences like that. But as a woman, I feel like I don't approach any situation that I like am kind of, yep. You know, I don't like go, oh, sorry, I need this thing. I'll just be like, I know how the guy TM would ask for this. Yes. So I just do it it. the same way. And that took a little bit to learn, but it definitely is the most effective. Like you're meant to be there. You're part of it. Ask what you need. Yeah, that's right. And I I feel like I kind of do the same thing because you're right. It's a boys club, but um, we're going to outwork them every single time. <laughs> no, uh, but just like you said, I mean, even with like other dude artists, um, I do feel like I have a lot of like guy friends in this town that like treat me like one of their little sisters, but they know not to mess with me. And they know that I'm there to do the exact same thing that they're to, there to do. Yeah, And we're exactly. going to keep that real clear. It's not negative. It's just like, we'll we'll be right here with you. That's right. Yeah. We're going to do it together. And I feel like y'all have a lot of brothers in town, too. I mean. like You one of them. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Right? You one of them. <laughs> we might be kin. We don't know yet. Oh, uh, yeah. Both Wilsons. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Both, from, both from Monroe family. Same last name. We don't know. We need to do 23 and me or something. Let's do it. Um. You guys, this has been incredible. Thank you, Grammy U. Thank you, Belmont. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Let's give it up one more time for Lainey and Meg. Thank y'all. Thank you, Dallas. Thanks for having us. And God bless y'all. Yes, thank you. (laughs) Mic drop. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Another huge thank you again to Lainey Wilson, Greta Van Fleet, all of our amazing panelists, our moderators today for your incredible insight. We are so grateful for Teresa and Music Cares. So thank you again to the songwriters and composers wing as well. All right. And you guys, remember to stay connected with us on all of our Grammy U socials. Okay. I'm watching all of you. And we're going to see you tonight at the after party, correct? Okay, that's right. That's right. We're going to see you tonight. All right, everyone. That concludes our program for today. Thank you for taking the time to be with us today, learning about how to break into the live music industry. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think it was a really, really great time. That's, that's our show. Thank you so much for coming.
Thank you, guys. Thank you.